This is Eris RA665, a radio made by Van der Heim. Uh, this is a Dutch company, basically uh, made by three people, three army officers. They start this company. Uh, PHJ Van der Heim and his young brother LW Van der Heim and IRJ Bulisma. They founded the the radio company Van der Heim and they start producing radios uh, from 1926 onwards. A later part, the Bulisma leave the company because he got job um, in the in the Philips uh, based in China. But other two brothers they keep on uh, making the the radios and uh, the other amplifiers at that time. And this model, uh, th th that company uh, was 50% bought by Philips and later part the Philips, they sell out the shares, but they keep on uh, produce, producing uh, uh, very good uh, equipment uh, uh, assembled in the Netherlands till 19, 1960, uh, 1966 when uh, the company Van der it stopped producing anything because then the Japan came into the electronic market and uh, high quality uh, equipment was imported from Japan and they were much cheaper than locally produced uh, uh, radios and audio equipment. That's how Fonder him stopped producing their radio but uh, this one uh, was uh, one of the their last production and they they assembled it uh, in 1965 december 1965 this radio uh, came in the market and it has a long wave medium wave long wave it has from 150 to 380 kilohertz and the medium wave from 525 to 1610 kilohertz and uh, short wave 5.8 to 17 megahertz and fm 87.3 to 104.5 only it's not uh, till 108 so that was the standard that time and uh, also uh, it's, it's totally uh, made by the vacuum tubes uh, this uh, uh, radio receiver the if frequency for the am uh, they have used 470 kilohertz and for FM 10.7 megahertz as per the schematic diagram. So today we're going to uh, try to listen short wave this evening on this radio. After all those years, we see that this radio uh, produced by Van der Hem and Eris, how it performed. If you see, uh, this is a volume control. This is the tone control this is the tuning and here are the button this is out means off this is for the gramophone it has a on the back side a dim connection where you can add the gramophone and they have a similar model with a rs665 ps which has on the top phonograph but this is only radio and this is fm and this one is for short wave k is for the short wave medium and the long wave so we try to listen the short wave this evening. See the light turns on and the tubes require some time to warm it up. And uh, here there is a one tube you can see over there. And uh, it is also called as a magic eye. So that when you, when you tune, you can see the rectification. We are tuned to Radio China International, of course. All short wave frequencies are flooded by the Chinese radio station nowadays because uh, most of the European radio stations, they stop broadcasting on short wave and some of, most of them on the medium wave and long wave as well. This is volume control. The 
This radio has two speakers, one this side, one other side. It's made with very nice wooden cabinet. And you see the dial is backlight. And uh, this is the tone control. Now high frequency full. Now low frequency. You might be seeing over there that white thing is coming up so this is an indicator of how much it's used this radio can be very loud let's see watch this magic eye while i'm tuning For antenna, I'm just using a small piece of uh, wire. It's not a proper uh, HF antenna. But this receiver on the short wave is receiving radio stations very, very well on the couple of meters long wire. This is radar. You mentioned traveling around a lot of cities in China, which was going to be one of my questions. So you went to Harbin. Did you go during the winter? Because I, I went to Harbin to take a flight flying like in the south of China. So I was just there for, you know, maybe two days and I, I went, you know, around a little bit. I saw the city, but yeah, no, I haven't been in winter. It was during summer. But you know, one of the interesting things that Chinese people like, I went, I was just in Harbin with a co-worker who is uh, also a journalist and we were in Harbin and we, I, I kind of gave her carte blanche she can bring us wherever she wanted to go. One of the, a couple of the places that she brought... <laughs> Uh, 
different, you know, from people like that have different customs, different, mm -hmm. you know, also different languages. Different. Sweet. Sweet. The important thing is that uh, it is able to receive the weak stations also and the strong also and strong stations are not fading the weak ones. It's not band spread. You need to be very delicate while tuning the, the frequency. And here in Beijing, I went to a Chinese New Year dinner, and they have a fish on the table, right? And the fish is supposed to face to the oldest or most important person at the table. So this is like a honorary kind of respectful thing. So it usually points at the, at the head of the table towards the oldest or, or most senior person. that uh, more than some of the other places that you got to visit. Ah, okay. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I don't know what radio station's insignia is this. I hope you like it uh, some other time especially in the daytime I will open it up and uh, share the circuitry with you and uh, you can try the other bands like FM medium and long wave so there are not so many stations over there but uh, in the daytime uh, I can also do an other video for, sh for sure for this uh, excellent uh, vintage radio to share with you guys Thank you for watching. Until next time.